Welcome back to the quick fix for week number four of the LPL. My name is Asterix and I'm going to give you everything you need to know for this ginormous week in the LPL. Opening up your week four with two of the biggest storms I've ever seen in the LPL. Starting with Weibo Gaming versus FPX. Game number one was a near perfect game bar two deaths from Weibo's side. Bottom side for Costa, not having any of that. Dives to the tower for the double kill. Alphaz alone. Weibo trying to escape from this one. Lilla alone as the TP came to the bottom lane. So Xiao, who gets free raid mid as well. The point I was going to make was if the game stays in a state where it's like 1v1 top, 1v1 mid, Carson, Hacker. Speaking of a 1v1 over. top, the Shy gets a solo. For game number two, it was the same kind of massacre. It just went a little bit longer with LWX finding some good picks, but still, Weibo held the driver's seat. Start this one off. The Shy bringing Shaolau Hu into his team and walking away with his life. The straight 5v5 is just too much for goal difference. Light oh. exhausted. A great attempt from LWX as Light might go down, but the healing comes through. I don't know how he survived that one, but that will be game. As we move on to JDG versus AO, it was the same vibe. JDG in game number one even set the quickest game on record for this split, clocking in at 19.48. Walks under the tower by himself, jumps onto Betty, doesn't have his Q, but Knight is here to finish the job. And then for the second time today, we almost had another perfect game with JDG only dropping a single turret against AL in game two. Gets a kill instantly. Sort up. Then next on the chopping block. On to our Tuesday where IG vs LGD opened things up and this was a messy series to say the least with IG getting caught out in game number one and having to fight a 4v5 which turned into a miracle play. He slams it on LGD and they're running but they ain't running very far as IG guns them down. Game two was more or less the same, with IG going way too deep in the enemy base, LGD getting the ace, but then overextending at red and giving the game back over for IG to 2 0. Golden and the fear has been put into the eyes of LGD! In our second series of Ultra Prime versus TT, game one was so TT sided, massive gold lead in the early game, but it came down to Elder and a couple of mistakes plus scaling that threw away the game. The armor of the Ultra Prime monster and their confidence to start back up this Elder Dragon. And base oh one's my dead. God, it's Ching. Ching. He's down. It was a good recovery, however, for game number two with Yukal jumping on his Yone and absolutely destroying with great team fighting against Ultra Prime. T they're using that oh, no. fate seal from Yukal sets up the wombo and Yukal picks up the kill onto Bala and Harry getting low, Ching getting low. They go down. And then finally for game number three, TT utilizing their poke cop so damn well against Ultra Prime, punishing well against this Baron, which eventually led to the demise for a 2-1 win for TT. Back into the pit and dead by TT. See if the Ultra Prime can get away with any of these Baron buffs. And they're losing them one by one. Chick tries to go back and Harry. Our Wednesday open with BLG versus WE. And even though BLG were firm favorites coming into the matchup, WE put on a show. Game number one, we got Shanks Cassiopeia once again with Hope and I Wandy bot gapping Elk and On. Of a flank right now. We're going to fully engage under the Yagao. Yagao is the only one who can really turn this one around with a petrifying game. Stops him in his tracks. Game two was a good bounce back for BLG, however, with Elk and On getting a 2v2 kill and a topside dive going fantastically with WE sticking around a little bit longer, giving over way too much to Bins Fiora. So you did not get anything else in that topside there for a hang. And that's just going to be so, so bad now for Team WE. Great start for BLG. They're kind of turning it around in game number two. So, what you can see there was Hope is trying to dash out. Oh, we're still fighting. Let's just talk about this. <laughs> we're going to talk about this because it's going to be a trade back now. One for one. And then finally for BLG versus WE in game number three, Shun was spotted out counter jungling and WE punished hard. Even though this game was back and forth, BLG never found the big gold advantage that they were looking for with this composition. So WE coasted all the way through to yet another series win. Damage down with this virus, but they just cannot. Good hook, not gonna land right between the post. Three points and a penalty. And WE get themselves first blood. And the great thing is, they have to keep going. They can't just let this one go because they talked about this composition. They can't just let it happen, Shanks. Is gonna oh. be flashing away, flashed by on, and now Elk and on in such a bad position. It's no. all going to hell. For the rest of Wednesday, we had OMG versus LNG, and I have to say that LNG's new AD carry LP has just been so promising. A great Draven game, one game to carry and snap down on OMG. Get the top laner, both of them shall fall. Now Abel goes in, but LP is too big. Triple kill for the Draven. 
We run into game two, and although LNG looked like they had a position to close it out, OMG were unrelenting. And especially in this last team fight around Dragon, PP God came in clutch amongst the GAs of OMG as well. The Anuks is that they get on top of everybody. Chanji trying to go God mode. The GA has been popped on the cream. Ash is dead. There's two GAs. They have second this lives. They're finally going for it. Chanji is just too big on this backside, and OMG come out with the fight. For our final game of this series, Samira finally given over to Abel. However, OMG choosing to take a fight in a 4 versus 5 without that said Samira was a little bit more perplexing. LNG eventually snowballing it out and taking the rest of the team fights in the game, rolling to yet another win. We traded back Shanji trying to go up against the immortal shield, but with this virus, Cream cannot escape. Abel's gonna be forced to flash and cleanse, you would imagine. Almost a Thursday where EDG vs NIP started in a very Zeri Yumi fashion. Walks away, stuns across the team. Botix now arriving as the final chapter across everybody. JJ, the target so far as the clash comes down. Botix steps way too deep in this one. The shield's coming up through, the healing is there, now is Fo taking alive right now, Fo Fo taking down, as part of the 2v1 on the back side, but it's a 2v1 he can win, and Fo Tick with a quadra! For game two, the Zeriyumi landed in EDG's lap, but I was looking at Fofo as Akali through the mid lane. 3-0 start in this early game, where he helped EDG move on to a game three. The lightning glass, oh my days, it's already over, NIP obliterated. For game two, the Zeri Yumi landed in EDG's lap this time, but I was looking at Fofo on the Akali with a 3-0 start early on. Helped them get to this game three in a very quick win against NIP. This is a wonky fight. Oh, he goes in. How does he get a kill there? It goes in 1v4 and somehow managed to find one. Invincible TPs into the play here, but EDG have already won. I literally coughed when I saw Leave go in. It gave me so much stress. He just ulted into four people and he is oh, not no. scared. NIP being surrounded. They're being, ended. They're being pushed into a corner and a cannon all thing at one kill. Our last series of the Thursday was RNG versus JDG, which used to be a competitive matchup, but with RNG's change in direction, with the fact that they look a little bit like headless chickens this split, and with JDG constantly hovering for angles, you can see why this game one was a good form 29 minute win. He's for RNG, almost finding fights, almost finding kills, and almost going down here in game number one, a triple kill for Kanavi. Coming into game two, you'd think things would look better, but no, JDG in under five minutes to find the game with Knights 1v2 through mid, with Kanavi getting a kill following up on Angel, and then we switch back over to the bottom lane where Ruler and Missing were able to get a 2v2 kill on the bottom lane, starting 4 and 0. And again, in under five minutes, this game was decided. Spiders! This game chased on through a web of lies untangled, and JDG too far up. And it just oh. became oh. such a good lead. Gala flashes forward and just gets eradicated. Ming flashing as well. The volley Ming? slows him. Missing. Wants the kill. Wants the support or combat. One more volley would do the trick. I don't know what the cooldown is One at this order. point. The sweeper finds him. And Missing gets his opposite man. Now onwards to Friday where RA vs AL opened us up. And even though AL had some good picks, especially with ZDZ's GP that annihilated Southwind, you look towards Cube on this Renekton once again being the foundation for RA. With Zero armor. Zero armor on him right forward. now. Which of those are gonna go forward on top of this, but the buy is already dead. This looks like it's gonna be a soul unless they can kill off Shao how they can. And they've killed the gangplank. Cube on the backside of this fight is a raid boss. Cube is ridiculously big. This is what an LPL Renekton can do. While well, RA get compliments for game number one, game two won't be the same as there were a lot of head scratches in that one from the bottom lane from even Strive on this chase. Even though Xiao Hao had a really good controlling early game on the carry Lee Sin, I think it was down to RA giving so much over in the span of minutes. Can't survive! I, I just Why? don't know what you're trying to go for here, all right? Now finally for game number three, after about 10 minutes of A-ramming, we got our decisive fight where Le Yen stepped up to the plate with a clutch ulti on top of Betty. Everyone piles in, and RA using the Ocean Soul are able to end this game and series. Two to one. They killed the silver. The silver is dead. And they're going to have to see now Ping Z trying to get out with his ultimate, but it's not going to be enough. We then move on to our final match of the night, which was Top Esports versus Ultra Prime and our IG World Champions reunion tour. 
Rookie and Jackie Love versus Ning and Bao Lan. And even though we're getting sentimental about it, Top Esports wasted no time in cutting to the punch. Game one was all about picking these angles, Tien playing this Maokai to superb ability, and Top Esports picking their target selection nicely. And then on to game number two, where Tien set up a tent towards mid lane, giving Rookie all of his love, and even netting himself a 4-0 start to this second game. We get on to later and Rookie is so in charge of the game where he's split pushing for pressure and Top Esports are winning a 4v5. Ending the game, guys, your base triple kill, quadra kill, coming in for Jackie Love. Now onwards towards Saturday where TT vs LGD was up first and all I can say is that people should have focused Juan Fong. This virus got a free ride through the early game and pummeled LGD in this first game. But TT have sent LPC running and the rest of LGD as well as Meteor taken down by UCAL slowly but surely. And another one might fall here. Hightow stopped with the flash from Beishwan and he'll chase down LPC. Those Swifties ain't got nothing on me. Now I wish I could say something different for game two but again, Huan Fong left to his demise to do whatever he wants in this small skirmish and LGD's focus all heading towards this big tanky Sejuani. Fong here onto LPC. LPC needs to be very careful. Arctic Assault in. Hightow is onto Huan Fong. Beishuan getting low flash out. It's everywhere. As Hightow gets the first, but it's quickly followed. Huan Fong cashing in and a double kill for you, Cal. Give them all the money. After that 2-0, we move on to IG FPX where Arn's Lucian gave us a bit of a heart attack, but man, this guy can really play embodying the spirit of the old IG ADs like Jackie Love this man is someone to watch shouting out 15 kills in this singular game I'm with the biggest brain I've seen bigger than Megamind and I love that movie as IG have taken down the top lane in the meanwhile as well five members stay standing how did on live when you take a look at game two all you need to know is that Gideon hit top over and over and over and over again setting up YS cam on his Camille, on his birthday, and giving IG just such an easy slope for the rest of this game. Now coming through for the rain, flashes for his wife, Cam's in a bit of trouble, but he backflips! It's Tony Hawk now in the top lane who once again lives on. Dove needs the range, one more auto cares coming in, but now he's dead. And then last but not least, we had JDG versus Weibo Gaming, which was our match of the week, in which Ruler and Knight uncharacteristically played so far off at their usual skill level, and for Weibo Gaming the Shy, even though he went 0-5 and five on this island, performed a miracle flank TP, setting up Weibo Gaming to clean house for game one. Nice Cotton Eye Joe, Weibo Gaming kill four, and that flank man, that 0-5 Zion, may have just secured game one. For game two, however, it was a good return from JDG. Double solo kill for 369 on his Gragas that Casa has previously talked smack on. Bottom lane was great zoning from missing as well, setting up the laning phase to be smooth for Ruler. And Kanavi just had a hell of a jungle game on this Wukong, with Weibo Gaming have no response at the end to just all in. For the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, I've seen. Oh yeah. my god. What a way to go out. <laughs> and then finally for game number three, JDG had like an 8k gold lead with the Zeri Yumi well in charge. And Ruler multiple times dashes in into the whole enemy team and just throws it all away. JDG end up giving that lead away slowly but surely. And Weibo Gaming using Xiaohe Syndra are able to get an upset of a 2-1 win in our match of the week. Done. Get away. Lyric, they've corrupted him. He used to be this saint in Gen G. Now he's come over, watched a bit of Jackie Love, and he's like, dude, let me at him. And now finally for our Sunday, LNG versus NIP opened up, but not in the way you'd expect. LNG looked messy, going in one by one, scout on this Yone, not the same as last time. And ultimately, NIP took advantage, having really clean performance from Pout, their new mid laner on this rise, and Shalom Bao's Maokai continues to be a priority pick. Five against the AD Cannon, his ulti already burned out, but now the on-hit ability is there. Zika just looking for the reset for the Grand Challenge, doesn't find his knife down the back end. Flash over from NIP, it looked dicey, but they still got what they came for, which was more blood of LNG dropping to the ground. Then moving on to game number two, LNG came to life a bit with Zika on his Fiora, Tarzan on the Lee Sin, and most importantly, LP's Varus cleaning through untouched in some of these team fights, finally net LNG a win in this game. I just started to do his things as Pout sets up for the CZ, they take the Realm Warp, Tarzan and Scout are the ones who go through, while LP is still in his fight at half HP, he's healed up, he's joined back in with the arrows there, he's got no summons, no, no, but can anyone get to him? Pout's trying to get him, but he engaged there and Shalom about flashing away, numbers advantage should be coming through, but 
Zika is a Fiora through and through, and it's just over through the solar lanes. LNG fight back, and NIP will wipe off the board. And to cap off game number three, Draws Ash, definitely my star MVP is LNG. Should have banned that one. It controlled the Rift all game long, and NIP getting a 2-1 off the back of it. Finally taken away that undefeated streak of LNG. Baron goes down to Tarzan, but LNG might not be escaping with their lives. As LP has to run for the hills while jumping in, thinking to death. Tarzan now feels the same wrath and flush away from LP. He's trying on Invincible. He takes down the sign and that might keep the game going on. But LNG playing yakety sacks with the purple worm. For our next series, we had RNG versus WE, and for game one, WE were cheeky and essentially just backdoored for a game one win. WE! No freaking way! They just used and duped RNG, and they take game number one! Holy crap! Game two, however, was night and day as RNG set up one successful gank towards bottom lane, a counter gank against Hung, which just gave RNG the road to victory with the Zeri Yumi combination. I won oh, these balls oh, next oh, way oh. with a double, and the Monkey King has come alive and well for RNG. As will he get the third kill? Do they give it to Gala? It should go over to the ADC. And then as we round out the series, RNG WE were to the wire in this third and final game. A crazy fight over the Mountain Soul Dragon, and then the Elder Dragon with Wei coming up clutch on this Maokai. Felt like a bit of a jungle diff throughout the series, to be quite honest. So, it's a front to back, and RNG take that all day long! They don't lose this fight any longer! And Iwandi chase down Angel! He takes a little bit of a zealous push, <laughs> but RNG clean house on WE. And now now our last series of the week, EDG vs BLG. Game 1 was all about this Fiora in the top lane, and I'm not talking about Bin. Arla came in strong on one of his pocket picks of all time, and EDG set him up for success to spike down a great Game 1 fight. Left in the fight! EDG destroy Billy Billy! And that's Infernal Soul to boot! And then finally in Game 2, BLG just looked like lambs running into the slaughter, with EDG picking apart the pieces, trapping them in the pen and making very short work of BLG. Line and another, and another, and another, and BLG. Well, for this week's LPL Quick Fix, my name's Asterix. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you for week number five.